So in today's video, we're going to be talking about ascites. So the definition of ascites is the accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal or abdominal cavity. Now the fluid which accumulates can either be transudate or exudate. If you don't know what that means, transudate basically has less protein and exudate is very protein rich. So as a general rule, if the ascites fluid is transudate, it tends to mean that the reason it happened was because of high pressure in the hepatic portal vein. And the main causes of this can be things like cirrhosis. If the ascites fluid is exudate fluid, it's usually due to inflammation and malignancy since it's more protein rich. So we can do this test here called a serum ascites albumin gradient, otherwise abbreviated to SAAG. And it's used to help determine the cause of ascites because the way to work it out is with this formula where you subtract the albumin level of the ascitic fluid to the serum albumin. So this formula basically means that you have a total amount of serum albumin and you just subtract the amount of albumin which is in the ascitic fluid and this gives you this gradient here. So if you have a high gradient which is for example 11 grams per deciliter that indicates portal hypertension which can either be liver related or non-liver related. This result basically means that there's not much protein in the ascites. So the way that this occurs is we have an increase in hydrostatic pressure in the blood vessels of the hepatic portal veins, and this forces the water into the peritoneal cavity, but it leaves the albumin proteins within the vessel. So the albumin level of the ascitic fluid will be low. So the causes of this type of Ascites can be cirrhosis, heart failure, Buddy Chiari syndrome, and portal vein thrombosis. With the low gradient result, uh, it has to be less than 11 grams per deciliter, and it's not associated with increased portal hypertension because there is a lot of protein present within the peritoneal fluid or the ascites. The causes of this can be tuberculosis, pancreatitis, peritoneal cancer, and infections. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of ascites. We can see from this diagram, which you can see here on the right, you can see the patient has increased abdominal girth. And the reason that happens is just because of the accumulation of the fluid. It pushes the abdominal and it appears a lot bigger. We also have a test, which is known as the fluid wave test. You can see this happening on the right. Basically, you place the patient's hand in the middle of the patient's abdomen and then you tap from one side of the stomach. And having your hand in the middle will basically stop any vibrations. But with patients who have ascites, the vibrations are carried through the fluid, which is in the abdominal cavity. So when you tap on one side, it's felt on the other side. And that's a sign of ascites. Bulging flanks are another sign of ascites, so it's where the sides of the abdomen are seen to bulge outwards and it's quite unusual and it's seen in patients who have a lot of fluid in their abdomen, it looks like this. Shifting dullness is another test that you can do on a patient if you're suspecting ascites. It's where you have the patient lie firstly on their back and you're tapping using your fingers over their abdomen trying to find signs of dullness while you're tapping. If you do suspect that there is dullness, you mark this position and have the patient lie on their side in the opposite direction and then you tap in the same place and if it was fluid which was present it should have shifted up in position because that's how fluid is. If the dullness is still in that same position then it's likely that it's some kind of abdominal mass or feces. However, if it was fluid or if it was ascites then you won't hear that dullness when tapping in that same position again because the fluid has moved upwards. Also, the patient may experience shortness of breath because of the increased weight that he's carrying in his abdomen, so that can lead to more tiredness and shortness of breath. You can classify ascites based on how severe it is, so grade 1 is very mild and it's only visible on ultrasound and CT scans. Grade 2 is detectable with this flank bulging and the shifting dullness and grade 3 is directly visible and the fluid wave test is positive. The causes of ascites are numerous so there's quite a lot of causes. I've listed some of them here. The ones in green are due to a high SAAG result so that means the ascites fluid is transudate so there's not much albumin protein in there so the cause of this can be cirrhosis, heart failure, Buddy Chiari syndrome, 
constrictive pericarditis and kwashiorkor. The ones listed in blue here are due to low SAAG cases, so they contain a lot of uh, protein. Uh, these causes can be cancer, tuberculosis, pancreatitis, and serositis, nephrotic syndrome, and angioedema. And we have some rare causes as well, such as Mig syndrome, vasculitis, and hypothyroidism. The diagnosis of ascites, there's quite a few tests to help distinguish the type of fluid. We have the serum ascites albumin gradient test that helps to determine whether it's an exudate fluid or transudate fluid. A complete blood count is also done along with the liver enzymes and basic metabolic profile. Ultrasound is also done to scan the abdomen and an abdominal CT scan is also done as well. This is just also to rule out any abdominal masses which may also be present as well. The treatment of ascites, if it's a high SAAG case, so it's got a low amount of albumin and it's a transudate fluid, the cause is basically due to this hypertension, so things like reducing salt, taking diuretics which counteract the function of aldosterone because aldosterone increases the retention of sodium and excretion of potassium. These drugs like spironolactone which counteracts aldosterone are useful. Drainage and transplant surgery is also considered. In low SAAG cases, which is due to exudate or higher amounts of protein in the fluid, it doesn't respond to salt or diuretic, so the treatment of the underlying cause of the ascites is the most important method.